and welcome back for another author interview here on Give Me Five, children and young adults book and author interviews and book reviews. So today I have the honor of welcoming, welcoming Nicholas Naroth, who is Papa Paws. He is a children's book author and illustrator, digital artist, graphic designer, and he lives in Ohio with Mama Paws and their doggies. Hello, Nicholas, how are you today? Hello, good morning to you and to everyone watching, whatever time you're watching. <laughs> exactly. So I'm so excited to have you here. My co-author and BFF, Missy Richardson, and I had the honor of uh, reviewing one of your books a few months ago, right? And That's right. it was uh, so much fun. I think mm -hmm. two, maybe two months, maybe, maybe two months ago. And uh, it's hard to say in COVID time, you know, it, it's two months seems like two years. So yeah. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, <laughs> you are absolutely right about that. <laughs> but it was a blast and I just love mm -hmm. the whole theme around it. So we want to know more about you. So tell us what was it like when you published your first book? And I want to know more about your featured characters and how they came to be because they're pretty special. Okay, they are pretty special, and I am completely biased, as is my wife, who edits the books. Um, I, you know, I've always drawn dogs. Like, back when I was a little kid, I would draw them, and back when we actually got a newspaper, there would be cute pictures of dogs in the newspaper, and I would tear out the news, you know, the page from the newspaper, and I'd copy it. And my mom still has a couple hanging in her house. One of them is the dog's face is facing you, but also his butt's facing you because he's stuck in this fence and he's looking back at you like, please help me, um, which is <laughs> one of my favorite Im images. And I, you know, I went to, I wanted to be a comic book artist at some point after that. And I even went to comic book school for a little while. There is such a thing. And it turned out I didn't want to do 22 pages a month, every month for the rest of my life. That, that just didn't... <laughs> It didn't, it sounds fun until you actually have to think about doing it. It's like, right. um, and so I went into graphic design. It was, it was a parallel, you know, similar kind of thing. I got to design things, which I love. I got to play with graphics and images and words and, and colors and those kinds of things. And so I kind of put, you know, dogs and drawing off the table for a while. But then when I met my wife, she came with three little doggies and I had been raised with dogs but I didn't have doggies when I was single. I just wasn't fair to them to be, you know, gone or, you know, off and doing whatever. And then it's, you know, late, I get home and they're like, where have you been? Um, but my wife came with three little doggies whenever I met her and, and um, they, I had never had the joy of owning a small dog. Uh, and she had two Yorkies and Molly, who we call a Yorkie, but she's more like a Bichon Frise, but she's an honorary Yorkshire Terrier, as uh, we call it. And, uh, little Gracie passed away, actually, the, the weekend after we got back from our honeymoon. Oh, Gracie um, was in was, our book that we reviewed. She was. Right? She was book number three. And when oh. after she passed away, she was very special. And she had a lot more problems. Yeah, I know. She had a lot more problems than you saw in the book. She had small dog encephalitis. You know, she, you know, we had to give her special food and medicine. But she was, she was just like the book you could not tell anything was wrong with her. I mean, she would play with the other dogs. She would, I watched her personally move to two new houses and she navigated around them as if she could see all the whole time. You know, I mean, wow. it was just, she was incredible. And she, she would always defend mama until she got used to me. She would bark at me when I came in. She'd bark, 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 bark. <laughs> but then she would snuggle between us. It was, she was sweet. And after she passed, I'm like, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be cool to do a, a book like The Little Engine That Could talking about Grace, Gracie, you know, about her bravery and, and, and kindness and those kinds of things. And so that, that idea had been back in my mind. And, you know, then a couple of, you know, a couple of years later, um, a couple things happened. A, I drew a little sketch. I should have had it ready to just like show you here. I drew a little doodle at work one day because I, I, I'm just, when I'm on the phone, I'm always doodling or I have to fidget or something. And I'm like, well, that kind of looks like Molly Paws in a way. And I'm like, huh, okay, well, I'll put it in my keep file. I, I scan it, I put it on my computer and I'm like, okay, something to come back to. And then my buddy, he wrote a book, which surprised me because he's a very low key um, kind of dude. And then one day he calls me up and goes, hey, would you like to design my book cover? I'm like, what you wrote a book and so that's like you know and I'm like 
when did when how how did you do this? He's like, oh, I just you know I just in my spare time I just did it and 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 blah blah blah. It took me a couple months, and I'm like, wow. Well, and I think that that kind of inspired me. It's like you know, and he's smart, capable guy. I'm like, well, surely I could make a book if he can make a book. You know, I mean, my gosh, and. Then I got the notion, the other aspect of this is that Molly and I specifically, Molly is so easy. She's the easiest dog I, that either of us have ever known. I can take her in the car with me without a leash. She will sit, she will stay, she will stay by my side. She hangs out with me. And we called those Papa Paws Adventures. We'd go get pizza, you know, you know, drop things off. We do target runs now. You know, I took her out. We, we returned to the DVD to the library. And I picked up a couple of groceries, you know, she came with me kind of thing. We washed the cars. And so then I'm like, well, what about something like this? Yeah. And so that's where the idea sort of germinates. So the characters were easy in that there are dogs. Yeah. Literally, uh, Miss Mia is, is was was the, the original trifecta is Miss Mia, Gracie, and, and Molly. I've actually got I've got their picture right here. I don't know if it's going to show up on the camera. Up a little bit. Yep. Okay, oh. and then um, it's a little reflective. So Molly's on the right, Miss Gracie's here, and Miss Mia's over the last one over here. So that's the original trifecta. Precious. And then, I know they are, and we <laughs> love them all. And then throughout the years, we've had a few more dogs. Uh, our beloved Zozo passed away in 2019 oh, after only nine months. She, oh, it broke oh. our hearts. It really did. So um, hard. We, it is. It, it really, like, I still to this day, like, you know, driving down the street where we were, we are fortunate to live close to the vet. And then we, between there's the vet and then the emergency vets, like a two minute drive. And whenever I hit that stretch of road, I still think about it. I mean, and it's, and I miss her every day as, as my wife does. It, it, They're family members. They're family. They are. Mm -hmm. They are. And Molly was such a good big sister to her. Oh. And I think Molly still kind of misses her. Uh, in my in my mind, I might be projecting my <laughs> feelings onto her, but they were best buds, and she was so sweet to Zozo. It, it was so cute. And um, before that, we had Harley. So after Gracie died, we adopted Harley, who was a rescue from a friend. He could no longer care for her, mm -hmm. and Ellen's like, "We have to we have to take this dog." And we'd never had a dachshund before, but oh my gosh, dachshunds are amazing. The, this dog. Ellen watched her in the yard one day. She had a splinter in her foot and she's like, ripped it out, spit it out and just <laughs> kept on going like nothing. Went. Whereas like Miss Mia would be like, oh, my paw is hurt. My, my paw is hurt, oh. you know, <laughs> so it's like, please help me. <laughs> just, yeah, it's, and, and Harley, um, she also was barking in the yard one day and I went out and I'm like, what is she doing? And there was this huge bug. It was probably about this big. And it looked like a thing from an alien movie. So I scooped her up, put her inside, and I'm like, did a quick Google search. It turns out it was called a wheel bug. You should really Google it if you've never seen one. And it's got, it, it, it's, it's this bug, and it's got this round part in the middle of it. That's why it's called a wheel bug. They apparently eat like aphids and other bugs that are bad for your yard. So they're good for your yard. Yeah. So I didn't, you know, I didn't have to worry about it poisoning her or anything like that. So I just left it alone. But I'm like, oh, this is one ferocious dog. <laughs> what planet um, am I on right now? <laughs> right? I know. Um, so Harley passed away and then we got Zozo. And then nine months later, Zozo passed away, oh sadly. Goodness. And we so got who's left? I know. Well, then we got Macy uh, after Zozo passed away. And then in January of 2020, actually, uh, we had heard about a bunch of Yorkies got dumped in like a park or something abandoned. And the organization we adopted Macy from was one of the people that was caring for them. And we reached out to our contacts and said, if you got a little baby Yorkie, you know, we would, we have room in our hearts in our house for another one. And that's where we got Marley or she's known in the books, Momo, because I wanted to make the twins, you know, a fun, you know, sort of parallel name. So Zozo and Momo. Zozo. Um, so yeah, so the three now that we have with us are um, Molly and uh, Marley and Mace. So we got three M's. And unfortunately, Marley and Molly sound enough alike. <laughs> Sometimes they both come. Both of them are like, <laughs> what? Whatever. I yeah. So I try to use Molly Paws's full name, Molly Paws. Mm -hmm. uh, that is her real name is Molly Paws. 
um yeah so uh, and is that yeah. molly we see in the background that there? Is molly back here let's see if molly, do you molly think she come. might want to do an appearance no, come see. Come see. <laughs> yeah there you are baby look i got some <gasps> molly yeah. Hi, yeah yeah she is molly just turned 14 in october and she is not a diva about starring in her own books she uh she rather enjoys it and i actually have this is her cover and then this is molly in real life she is <laughs> so, adorable yeah she is i i love her to death huh yes you're such a good girl oh you want more okay you can have more of those um and then um so actually book four that's coming out soon hope i can i hope it's okay um hole in the fence comes out in january and it has harley and macy and this represents the whole group you know at this point i've introduced all the dogs that we have currently had to this date kind of thing. And now we can have fun and just plug and play and, you know, put them in wherever, you know, we need to kind of thing. I, um, and so after book three, which was Gracie's book, mm -hmm. that was a tough book. My wife and I both cried while we were making that book because it was, um, you know, a lot of emotion for us. So book four is more of a less heavy topic. It's more about playing. They're playing in the yard they find these holes in the yard. Who did these holes in the yard? You know, where, what's going on? These kinds of things. So um, it's super fun. It, it's a cute little adventure that's, you know, the, the main spirit of the stories, which is just everyday life, you know, things that happen to dogs or people. <laughs> it's like they get to be together in spirit in the book, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love yeah. that Zozo and Molly can still play together and Zozo has a twin Marley and you know they can play together and you know and she can live you know Zozo can live forever you know they all can which is which is pretty neat. Um, and I think that yeah. probably animals can sense other animal spirits if they're still around you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think so. What do you think Claus? Huh? Molly She's you're looking. amazing! She's looking at her goodies there. She's like, I got goodies over here, Papa. What you doing? Um, yeah, so we we love, I mean, you know, we, we love having the doggies in the house and they do give us such good spirit and energy. And, you know, I'll look over and, you know, now, so the baby is what we call uh, Marley or Momo. The baby has learned that when it's time for her second dinner at night, she will go and stare at Molly Paws and Molly Paws will stare at me. <laughs> to get my attention <laughs> you're the one who gives the food <laughs> right, right. The food. <laughs> but but only at nine o'clock at night for that meal when it's time for dinner dinner they all look to my wife and be like mama what do you you know it's time for dinner you know and i oh, love yeah. the fact that the books uh missy and i were discussing your book that we reviewed mm -hmm. it is such a wonderful way to introduce lessons of life to the kids through Molly Paws and her her sisters, the twins. And I just, I adored it, you know, and, you know, about sharing because kids mm -hmm. have a hard time, you know, you're moving into my house, you're taking my toys, right? And, and so it was done so perfect that a child could understand it and get a good message from it. So mm -hmm. I love that you've been able to craft that together you know and for... i have to do give due credit to my wife ellen because i you know i will do uh the layouts and then i'll be like what do you think and she is really good about like okay these are children you know targeting you know the little ones up to age five and it's like okay what makes sense for a little kid are they going to understand you know this word or that or or that so she has really helped shape the stories um it's funny i'll I'll go in. We're working on book five now, actually. And so I actually oh just got, we were just talking about it today. And so it's like, I have all these edits and I'm like, oh, this is great, honey. You're going to love this book. She's like, well, what about this, this, and this? I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You know, it's kind of like, one of those, like, yes, I love it. And this is just like, what about, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> but it's, it, it is good. And she's really good at the editing process, thankfully. Um, and I think she really helps shape that end product to really be that sharpness where you get just the right word and just the right intonation of me. And there are some things that like, if I wonder about like book five, we're, we're gonna do bath time. And so like, there's a scene that's really cute about them adjusting the water, hot or cold. 
and I didn't have room to draw the water coming down. And I'm like, ah, it'd be nice if I had the water in there, but I like this layout without it. Well, my wife goes, wouldn't it be better if there's water in there? I'm like, okay, I'll find a way to make it fit. You know, it, it's They're like testing like their paw in the water. <laughs> Uh, well, it's actually, a, um, I ended up just doing a stream of shower because they're adjusting the hot and cold. Um, so, and then um, it's some fun with ears going up when it's too hot, maybe. <laughs> right? yes. So I love, one of my favorite things is when Molly's ears go up in the, uh, in the books because she's excited or. or <laughs> How old is she? How old is Molly? Molly is 14 uh, and I, it was in October. So she is... Uh, Grandma. She has had a good life, yeah. And we had our, our Miss Mia left us after 15 and a half years. So, That's and Gracie time. was 10, Harley was 10. So, we get long uh, lives, yeah. We, yeah, we have, and we like to think that we get a happy life where you get to be a doggy, 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 and have all sorts There's of lots fun. Of treats. Oh, my yes. dog oh would be so jealous. <laughs> I know you eat the rest of these, yeah. I know. You know, I right. thought about that uh, when I was thinking about Molly and you're writing the stories about uh, writing a book because I inherited my pug, Ponyo, who was actually my son's dog. And when mm -hmm. he got married to his wife, she's afraid of dogs. And then he's actually kind of allergic to the animals, sadly. So Aww. I inherited Ponyo and she's, what, nine years old now? But she mm -hmm. always looks worried because she's a pug and she always is hungry. It seems like mm -hmm. she like she's starving to death. She looks at those big eyes like, are you going to feed me? Are you going to feed me? Uh, <laughs> right? Yep. It's like, yep. so I thought I should write a book, The Pug Who Ate the World, because yes. she will never stop. <laughs> and then I Googled it, and somebody already wrote a book about the pug who ate the world. I'm like, ah, they have a pug like that, too. <laughs> really? Oh, I might have to check that out. I do, that sounds awesome. <laughs> because they're such characters, aren't they? I mean, you have, oh, you know, yeah. the personalities of your dogs and that lends mm -hmm. towards the, the creative writing process. What is it right. like to work with your wife as your editor? The, the You're able to bounce ideas off of each other and and there's no fighting, fonting or feuding? <laughs> um, I think we do pretty good. Um, it's, it's good. Usually the, the way that works for me is I will storyboard out the idea mm -hmm. and then I will put them into the layouts. Cause I work, uh, the storyboarding is done pencil and paper, just like, you know, traditional, whatever. And then once I've got a solid notion of where things are going to go, then I start laying it out and I use all of the existing artwork that I have to make the layout for, for the initial start. Um, and then I go in and see, okay, I might need to draw something new here. I need to add these elements. I need to draw these elements, that kind of thing. So everything is, everything is hand-drawn digitally. I have a, you know, I have a, a Wacom tablet with a digital pen that I draw with. And um, so everything is either hand-drawn and traced or I draw it completely digitally. And I, I've, um, the app I use has brushes that look like handcrafted. So then the great thing about it is if I want it to be a watercolor look, I change a brush and I don't, I, you know, all the strokes can stay the same. And, and so that, I love that because then I can easily adapt to whatever I want. And especially in the beginning, I didn't know what kind of style I wanted either. So it gave me a lot of freedom to play with what is this going to look like? Um, like sometimes I get a little frustrated. I'm like, oh man, do I have to really like, we were talking about some illustrations for book five and I'm like, I don't know how I can draw that. She's like, but you know how to draw. I said, yeah, but I'm still not quite sure how to draw that, especially, you know, in keeping, you know, you've got, we've got a style now. Yeah. So in keeping in the style in a way that makes sense, you know, kind of thing. So it's, um, it's one of those challenges and making it fit and work because I do want, I want, you know, I want the dogs to be the main focus. Yeah. I also, you know, and I, I don't know. I want to showcase them. So I don't want to, I, I want to make them as large as possible, but I also mm -hmm. want to tell the story. So sometimes I'm the sizing and scaling is a little tricky for me because I'm like, well, yeah. is, if I make them this much smaller. Is that going to be okay? You know, is the kid going to really, they're going to really appreciate that. Is that going to be okay? You know, and I, I was trying some fancy stuff. I was more back to my comic book days where you have more pages and panels to tell things and my wife's like well I think we need to add these elements in so I'm like uh, but then ultimately I'm like she's probably right 
So uh, I've been working on those changes today, actually. Um, it is difficult so. because I know with our Milo series, it was fully illustrated color pages. And mm -hmm. for me, I have to tone it down because I also have a, a middle grade realistic fiction series that I write as well. But mm -hmm. I had the fully illustrated pages. And now I'm trying on the third book, trying to make a segue into chapter books. So it's like, do you do the whole color or just a little blurp down here of a picture of the characters? Ah, so I'm kind of stumped. Yeah. So I, yeah, I can empathize with you. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's these. These are things. You know, it, it's something. You know, someone sees a finished book, they're like, "Oh, this is nice." You know, <laughs> I don't know the headaches you, you know, went through to get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, like my wife will tell you. You know, I spend. You know, I spent a lot of time storyboarding, and then I spend a lot of time working on the art and illustrations. And I like to show her, she's pretty visual. So I think it helps to show her visually what I'm thinking so that she can get a clearer idea. So I wanna to present to her as clear a vision as I can and as complete a vision. And yeah, I know I'm gonna to have to make changes and that kind of thing, but I think it's worth the effort up front because then she can get a better idea of what I'm going for. And I think it helps with the communication. It's, I think it would be, I don't know how it would be like if she were to edit like a words book like I you know I've been working on the uh, it's the YA book I'm working on is going to take longer than I thought <laughs> but it does. I, I've also I, I also I mean I love it and I want to continue on with that character but at the same time I really want to focus on this because you know it just it gives me utter joy to think that somewhere right now it's bedtime in the world and there might be a child and their parent reading one of these books and enjoying them and you know the cut one of the reviewers um she's like i read to my grandson or granddaughter i can't remember which and she's like keeps asking for more molly paws molly paws read the molly paws book and i'm like that just you know and that's because i you know my parents read to me when i was a little kid and, and that's just some really happy times for for both sides and even grandparents, you know? Um, so I, it's really an honor to be a part of that. And I, I, wanna, I wanna work on that. I've got storyboards for up to book 10 and I've got two more books that I know the, the, the theme and what we're gonna do. They're a little more complicated because those will be a counting book and an alphabet book. So that's a lot more complicated uh to do but um i, I want to have that solid base of books so that if a child is like i want more molly buzz books and there's only you know there's only two it's like wait a minute <laughs> you know <laughs> so I'd, I'd like to be able to have some out there for, for for the kids you know yes and my grandson is six months old now so i imagine by the time i'm going to be reading him books and he's going to bed at night maybe you'll have a box set maybe That'd be nice, wouldn't it? That'd be yeah. super fun. Yeah, <laughs> and then, yeah. I, because shipping is so expensive from the United States to Korea. So I'm saving up all the children's author books that I've been interviewing that I love. I'm going to order them all at once so I can just get the pain of shipping over here. <laughs> <done at once. laughs> so maybe you have a box yeah. set by then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. That would be awesome. Yeah, that, that would be... Uh... I've had some notions of that. I'm not sure how I do that yet, but uh, it would be kind of fun to be able to do something. Planting stuff like the that. seed. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I'm with you. I would love to do that. I think that would be good. Yeah. So yeah, I imagine when you were growing up, since you like the comics, did you have like a certain book that was your favorite? Were you strictly a comic book kid or what was your favorite book growing um, up? You know, I have, I actually still have them. Um, the, the ones that stick out in my mind are the little engine that could, and I don't remember the name of it. I've got it on the shelf back there. It, it's, um, it's one with cars and trucks. It was a little golden book. Um, and I remember reading that one and I have one, I think it's called Eloise, the blue cow or Eloise, the cow or something, which is a little golden book. Mm -hmm. um, the shelves, Silverstein uh, poetry books. Uh -huh. um but then after that i really got into because like school you got to read books and they make you read blah 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 and then they tell you well this is what the author was thinking and i've always wondered i'm like how do you know that uh, <laughs> that's my person right but so i got a little like like book books i think that's you know i turned into comics and it was sort of that nice hybrid of these 
fun books I read as children that were picture based, but as a little bit, it wasn't a novel kind of thing where I had to read it for school and report back on. It was just something fun for my own yeah. enjoyment. So I was on comic books, you know, from like age nine or 10 up to, you know, 20s, I would say. I think, yeah, I think when I moved out is when I sort of stopped. But even then, like I see a comic book and I hear about the storyline, I'm like, ooh, maybe I should ooh. Buy, <laughs> buy that. Or I may have gone, you know, now there are graphic novels, which are the collections of the story. So sometimes I buy those. Uh, like El Defo is really good, a graphic novel about a, a girl who's, who has some hearing problems. That's oh, really wow. good. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And the author illustrator said, ah, it was really a lot of work just going frame by frame by frame by frame for this, you know, 100 page book, you know, mm -hmm. so I can just imagine I can't even draw stick figures well, let alone 100 pages of. <laughs> right, right. right? Yeah, it, it's uh, yeah, 100 pages and then the pacing and, you know, the different sizes. And, and yeah, there's a lot to consider on that that people don't think about. So Nicholas, I have, uh, I'm a teacher as well. So mm -hmm. my students are obviously Korean students and they're elementary, middle school, high school. And a lot mm -hmm. of them like to watch the YouTube videos because as you know, or maybe you don't know, here in Korea, we've been under the mask for two and a half years now with COVID. Mm -hmm. So we've only seen each other's eyes for over two years. So they oh, like wow. to watch the video so they can actually, well, that's what teacher looks like underneath that mask, right? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but a lot of them have been super inspired by the author interviews and the book reviews and i'm starting to notice that they're wanting to write their own books so what would you give what advice would you give to students or youth out there who are aspiring thinking they might want to write what's some advice that you could give to them as an artist and an author um that's a good question i uh, i was always told write what you know and i'm like but I was always interested in like sci-fi and superheroes and I never could figure out, you know, how does that, how does that come together kind of thing. And then I started doing Papa and Pa's books and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm writing about my family, you know, and it's a fun and interesting thing. I'm like, oh yeah, how about that? That just ended <laughs> up, you know, through happenstance. Um, you know, as an artist, whether you're a writer or a visual artist, any new experience you get, goes into the, you know, goes in here and it gets churned around and it comes out in some form or another. So try to experience as many different things as you can. Uh, if you like to travel, do that. If you like to go to museums, do that. And I know that's hard with COVID. I'm not doing any of that right now myself, even though the US is like, hey, we're open for business. I'm like, mm, no, I'm not ready for that. Um, but even, you know, watch a documentary about a place you've never been to. And then if you're gonna draw, draw, you know, there are, I mean, when I was a kid, we did not have YouTube. So in order to learn to draw, you had to go to school, take, you know, pay for a class, pay for a book, that kind of thing. Whereas now you can go to YouTube and you can have many wonderful drawing lessons for free. So if you're interested in that, try um, the same with writing. You know, there are many writing lessons on there. And um, I, I would say if you're interested in it, give it a try and, and see and write things. I mean. My first comic book that I wrote when I was nine is, you know, I look back today and I'm like, oh my gosh, I was nine. It's, you know, <laughs> it's not the greatest, but it was about my dog, Woody. And it's oh, about wow. Golio, which I don't know where I came up with that name. Golio was his name. And uh, <clears throat> he was a mustached man and it was about him and, and, you know, the dog. And somehow Mr. T got in there because he crashed into the house and like, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, and, and so I just started making them. And for me personally, I learn more by the doing of it. And, you know, I, you know, yeah, you need some kind of instruction if you literally don't know the steps to take, mm -hmm. but once you know that you just, you practice and, and, and learn it. And if you don't like it, that's okay. Try something else. I mean, within the creative field, music, drawing, writing, you know, poetry. Okay. There are yeah. so many different areas of, you know, you can do special effects for movies. So it, it's, you know, especially when you're in school, I mean, now that's the time to be like, oh, well, this sounds like fun, you know, that kind of thing. So that, that would be my encouragement, you know, just experiment a little bit, see what you're drawn to. Because like for me, 
I'm like, oh, I like this, I like that. You know, we're talking about going to Japan and, you know, but my aversion to plane rides, right? <laughs> so the odds of me actually going to Japan are pretty low, right? <laughs> but I'm still drawn to that. Mm -hmm. But I am not drawn to, you know, pilot a boat. Like right. learning how to pilot a boat. Like whenever I think about the steps involved with that, I'm like, no. Yeah. no. And so that that's kind of been, you know, I've I've been drawn to that. And that's kind of why... <clears throat> Like I've been drawn to this making the storybooks. It's drawing and writing. Um, and it sort of gets back my childlike sense of fun. I, I credit improv class with a lot of like I'm a perfectionist, and that helped me learn to accept that it doesn't have to be perfect. Right. And and put it out into the world. So um, I think that's the other thing for art artistic people in particular is you have to learn to accept it's not going to be perfect. The great thing is nowadays you can self-publish. And if you don't, if version one, you're like, well, it's out there. And then now I want to fix it for version two, you can do it. And it's not a big deal, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, it's a wonderful way for people to, you know, get out there and do it. Yeah. You got to market, which I still uh, marketing is a whole nother beast, but you know. Uh, I didn't sign up for that, but sadly, right. as a, a self publisher, you have to learn marketing too. It's right. like, yeah, yeah, I didn't go to school for that. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there are some basic skills I wish I would have taken in school. One yeah. of them would have been a basic business course, and one of them would have been a basic marketing course. I think that that, you know, I had to learn everything on the job or, you know, through whatever. And I think having a foundation in it would have made more sense to me and helped me along. So yeah. kids, if you are going into an artistic profession, even if it's not a part of the curriculum, take at least one bu business basics class, a marketing class, and some kind of like, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to call it accounting, but like, so you know how to do like your income versus what you're spending. So that you know, whether you, you know, whether you actually can eat this month. <laughs> you know, Return on investment, money. ROI, right? I think it's called. Yeah, right. You learn what I, yeah, that kind of thing. That, that would be my, uh, that was a long-winded reply. Um, but <laughs> no, but there's a lot to learn, it. but the basics are, you know, learn some basics, keep practicing and go towards what you're drawn, what you are drawn towards. Awesome. Um, now, <laughs> Papa Paz, do you yes. have your three I know you don't have book number four yet, maybe that you can maybe open up and show us the insides of one of them and you and Molly can. I have book four too. We have book one. We have book two. And then we have book three. And then I'll open up book four for you. How about that? You get a little sneak peek here. How's that? Let's see if I can do it and look at this. Here. I don't know what page is going to open to because it's hard to do it from this thing. <laughs> so there's a. Okay, there we go. Oh my. Uh, there's a lot of holes in the yard. They're all different sizes too. Papa's not going to be happy about all these holes in the yard. <laughs> and then there's small holes, medium holes, large holes. Look at this one. It's really deep. So I know some people have been kind of, they've called me out on look it, but that's a term we use here. And I'm like, and this is the beauty of being a self-publisher. I think the word is cute. I'm going to leave it in. <laughs> so, so that one. And then, what, who could have made all these holes? A bear? Urgh. Let's say, oh, it says, he says, grr. The bear says, grr. A raccoon? Urgh. A kitty cat? <laughs> I don't think it's the kitty cat. Do you want me to go through the whole book? or? No, this is great. Okay, all right. Uh, oh, I can't read that one backwards. Um, <laughs> I, uh, let's see, what does it say? Thank goodness we've been looking for you all day. Hey, Harley, wait for me. I want to play too. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> it's our neighbors, Harley and Macy. <laughs> I love their shock face. Years <laughs> up. Girls. What is what has happened out here? The yard is such a mess. We're sorry. Macy and I just wanted to come over to play, and we didn't know how to, we didn't mean to cause trouble. Well, I'm not happy 
that the yard's a mess in such bad shape. Sorry, <laughs> it's hard to read upside down. <laughs> I am I am happy you told the truth. Now let's uh, patch these holes with some flowers. Good choice, mama loves yellow roses. And this is actually, Harley literally did this. She brought in a rose in her collar one day from outside that we had, uh, we used to, um, we used to give flowers back to the earth whenever they were done with them. And we had done that a couple of days before. And one night I let Harley out, it was dark. She came in, she hopped up on the couch with us like she normally did. And I was sitting there, I looked over and she had a rose strung up through her collar. And it was just, and she, you know, she just, nothing was wrong by her means. She's a tough dog. She's like, well, I've got a flower on me now. Here I go. <laughs> so, you know, I have pictures of it. It's adorable. So that inspired this moment, right? I love now it. we're getting to the exciting part here because we've got, mmm, the flowers smell so good. They taste good too. Mm. Zozo's the little, you know, she's the smart, independent one there. She's got to try and <laughs> Wow, the roses are beautiful. Now let's make a hole in the fence. What did you say? Papa, are you feeling okay? <laughs> We're going to make a doggy door in the fence so you two can play anytime you like. And then you can see the list of items they need. Um, a hammer, nails, paint, and help from the doggies. And the doggies are gonna be able to hop through and the door opens. Ah, oh, that's great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see here we're almost through this book here let's see oh yes and then it's looking great you uh keep up the good work and you've got miss mia's in charge she's the boss and then you've got marley she's she's taking a little break sniffing some flowers zozo's doing the math which is a term we use for her because she would sit there and she would we'd do up up uppies which is we'd sit on the couch and she was just three four she was four and a half pounds when she passed away and she would hop up on her legs and like that last hop, she would leap and we'd have to catch her, but she'd always stand there for a minute. It was like, and we always said, she's doing the math. And then she's like, doom, 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 whoosh. And then she'd make the leap and we'd catch her. It was cute. <laughs> uh, Molly's got the paintbrush with Macy and Harley's doing some hammering over here. I love the hard hats. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, my Church wife is like, Right. And my wife is like, well, why don't you make them pink? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> why <don't I? laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then it's a nice teamwork, girls. Thanks for helping to make the hole in the fence. Yay. And then you can see that it's oper fully operational there. And then we've got our closing. Thank you, Papa. We love to play with our friends. And then I've got a little thank you for reading. And uh, I've started adding these in the back where it's the thank you for reading. And then a little thing that says, you know, where you get more books at, if I can actually open this last page, um, just to show, you know, Fantastic. inspired by, yeah, some of the other things. So yeah, so that's book four. Um, wow, thank you for sharing. That was story time too, it was wonderful. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I um, I really enjoy doing the story times. Uh, I just re-recorded all my story times, uh, made them a little better. Uh, the first time I did it, I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going <laughs> to And then my friend's like, my wife has some suggestions. She's a school teacher. And this is, how, I'm like, oh yeah, that's much better. <laughs> We're always so, taking suggestions. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So it worked out really good. Um, oh, and, that's yeah. fantastic. And so I'm going to Thank include you. down in the detail box below where everybody can go to your website mm -hmm. and get your books and your new release is coming out January 11th. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Next Tuesday. That's like yeah. next week. I know. Right. It's, right? it's uh, uh, yeah, we're 99% uh, of the way there. I've got some things to do on uh, launch day, but uh, the books are ready to be sold and you know, they're on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all those, you know, fun places. So congratulations. Well, we look Thank forward you. to the new Thank book you. and I look forward to your collection when my Thank grandson you. is about a year old. So you got six more months to get that together. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll I'll, I'll bang out those uh, 12 books in just another couple of weeks, you know. <laughs> no problem. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so happy that we got to see Molly and she's been such a good girl to sit there on your lap. Of course, she's getting vibe too, but yeah. what a good girl. 
She such is such a good girl, we'll Molly. Such a good girl. That's our last goodie. We might lose her now. That uh -oh. she's like all the goodies are gone. It's time. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's been fun to talk to you. Thank you so much, Nicholas. Pop applause. Congratulations yeah. on the new book and all the wonderful books and sharing part of your life with us. And Thanks. we'll look forward to seeing you maybe in book number four or five. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Take care. Take care. Bye for now. Bye-bye.